I, I, I reintroduce myself. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm, I'm, I'm your local astrophysicist. And I met Jeremy for the first time uh, when they had agreed graciously to grant an interview for my television show, Star Talk, which is where we find people from pop culture, hewn from pop culture, and find ways that science has, or technology, or math has touched their lives. And this was an ideal candidate for that. And so we were delighted to have Jeremy uh, in my office. Uh, just to, I want to clarify something about the Fields Medal. It is not an accident that he looks so young. The Field Medal is given only to people younger than 30, if I remember correctly. 40. Younger than 40. And it's only given once every four years. So in fact, it is much rarer than the Nobel Prize. So you should think of it as a greater achievement than just simply getting the, the Nobel Prize. Um, so I'm going to ask some, some perfunctory questions up front, then we'll, we'll open it to the floor. Uh, Jeremy, you always get asked this, but we get to do it again. Uh, to prepare for various acting roles, uh, presumably you prepared to be a lion when you were in The Lion King as Scar, whatever that required of you. And it's funny, my brother-in-law said, I don't remember, my, my, <laughs> my sister said, well, I didn't remember him in Lion King. My brother-in-law said, no, he, he was wearing a lot of makeup in this, he couldn't <laughs> tell. <laughs> um, but in this movie, you're not only acting, you actually have to put equations on the chalkboard, writing Greek letters. And there are ways that we write those equations that an actor would not necessarily know, and they don't teach it to you in acting school. So where does that come from? Well, before I ask that question, I want to ask you a question. What's that? <clears throat> and that is, uh, I've had one and a half martinis. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly is happening to my body? <laughs> so it is a reminder that the human brain is a very sensitive place and almost anything you do to it disrupts your interpretation of reality. Right. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, with that rather obscure interpretation of reality, I will try and answer the question, uh, which is how do you prepare for, how do you make, well, you get a guy called Ken Ono, and, uh, who, who I'm told, I know nothing, but I'm told by people who apparently do know, like you, that Ken is one of the foremost mathematicians in the world. And, and you say to Ken, Ken, this is what I have to say, and this is what I have to put up on the board. Does it make sense? Or in 12 months' time, when I show the film to mathematicians, will they laugh me out of court? And Ken says, no, we'll get it right. And so he does all the, uh, all of the calculations and he checks that everything we're doing is right. And then as an actor, who, who acts as a quite sort of stupid people when it comes to mathematics, <laughs> you learn it. And you do it, and you try to do it with a little bit of a plum, as if you know how you do it. And after all, I would, have, I would tell you that I saw a film by Tom Hanks the other day, where he was on a tanker, and the tanker was um, taken over by terrorists. I don't know how many of you saw that. He was the captain of the tanker. Now, I know for a fact that Tom could not drive a tanker. <laughs> so, I, I felt happy. Okay. Uh, also, we live in a time I think a very hopeful and impressive time where we have a spate of films, biopics, that feature unknown or under-celebrated characters in the history of science and technology. And the producers and directors and writers of those films also know that if they want to do it right, they want high-level advice from people who are expertise or experts in those fields. And you you were brought on for this. And what title did you carry in the film? An associate producer. A, a, associate producer. So tell me what you brought into the film to presumably to to bring a level of authenticity to all that was portrayed. Well, first of all, one thing that I want to say is that uh, for mathematicians, this film was a dream come true as we all grew up as mathematicians learning about the story of Ramanuja. And it inspires us. And it was always tough for us to tell other people because they'd never heard of him. And this was an opportunity for mathematicians to tell one of our favorite stories to the world. And that was just huge for us. Uh, 
I thought I'd have to do a lot more uh, when I came onto the onto the film because I thought there's no way that they could get it right. Um, <laughs> Because I had three experiences before. With film. <laughs> With film, where they try to pretend mathematics and they get it so wrong that you don't even know where to start. <laughs> and, and then I saw Matt's script. And I look at Matt's script and he gets us in a way that I never imagined. Yeah. A writer and director who hadn't had previous mathematical experience maybe. But he showed like he got us that we think of mathematics as an art. We don't, it's not a, a robotic process, it's an art, a process of discovery, of creativity. Yeah. And he really got that in the script. Uh, but still, I, I hadn't seen the film, I thought, well, how, you know, I know Ken went on set and trained the actors, I was told, but how do actors who come to mathematics on the board, how are they ever going to be able to, uh, to portray that, even though in the script it's all so close uh, to what it really, really is like for us. And you watch Jeremy, and he nails it. <laughs> and you feel like, oh my gosh, it's the first time that we've seen a mathematician working like a mathematician on, on screen. And, that, and you see, they have, they have the same. And that was just a huge, just a huge moment for, for me, just to, to know that I don't have to do very much. This is all, you know. So I spent some time with the, in the editing studio with Matt. They show us a couple takes. Uh, and it's, it's some of the actors you get to choose which one is better. And Jeremy, every take is amazing, and you're like, can we keep both? <laughs> um, but that was, it was really easy. They were really so talented. And we, I really feel this is the first time for mathematicians that we, we felt like we were represented the way we actually do our subjects, and that was really helpful. <laughs> So I remember when I first interviewed Jeremy on this, he described the fact that the character himself, the, the, the pride, the jealousy, the, 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 all the normal human emotions, he's got that because he's an actor. It's the rest of this, that he, the patina on that, that he had to work on to then fold into being the mathematics human rather than the, the lover or the, the, the villain or the, the other traditional roles. Um, uh, do, do you, can you reflect on just biopics as a genre and what they can do? Because I can tell you this, you're at the White House tomorrow because this matters more than just a normal movie would matter. And we know the value of STEM fields going forward. We know the value of the intersection of STEM fields with art, which makes the acronym STEAM, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. So it's an important film done brilliantly. So how, how do you reflect on, on on biopics such as this? Well, I, I mean, it, it, as an actor, it puts you under a little bit. I'm so glad the food's coming. Please, <laughs> please eat. We're just a filler, really. To, to, get, get eating. And, and we're going to... Is mine there yet? No. <laughs> um, it's, so, it's so much better to do these talks at the beginning of the meal isn't it, where you have to wait, because by the end of the meal, I'm going to be paralytic anyway, so I, 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 I couldn't be doing this. But biopics give you a slight, you, you feel slightly responsible, because you're playing somebody who existed, um, and sometimes when I do biopics, I play someone who does exist, as when I play Klaus von Bühler. But I wanted to try to be part of a, a creation of a real atmosphere of, of um, mathematical creation, and I'm glad I did. Um, you said some stuff about um, steam and stem cells, which I didn't quite get. <laughs> but but that, the, the martini yeah. interfered with that. Yeah. yeah, science, technology, engineering, and math yeah. gets you the nice acronym STEM. Oh, you oh, STEM. STEM, and you throw an A in there for art, and you get steam. Uh, yeah, we got this, we got this. Yeah. Yeah. You see, his way ahead of me. What are you drinking tonight? No, no. <laughs> I'm, drinking, I'm drinking line 39. Line 39. There yeah. you go. There you go. Um, so the answer is, uh, it's an added responsibility. It's wonderful for me to make another film with Ed Pressman. Um, give him a round of applause. I have to tell you, he's a better film producer than he is a speaker. <laughs> But we can put up with that. Um, 
I love to have him near me because he w works as a wonderful bounce light for me when he's when he's standing just here. <laughs> Well, that's good. And he's a, he's a wonderful friend, um, a man who makes me laugh and who I can sometimes make laugh. And I'm thrilled about that. And I love the fact that he is pushing this film, he is helping this film. He not only produces it while we're making it and supports us and finds the money beforehand, but he has staying power. And God bless him because there's not many like him.